Hello everyone and uh, welcome in this new recording. We are still uh, focusing today on the terrain rendering in the Nerveland engine, but I actually made a pretty large uh, jump forward in the implementation because uh, we can't really see that from this point of view, but we now have a proper support for the complete planet scale rendering of the terrain. So let's just get uh, up in the sky to see that. Um, yeah, I guess the um, noise distribution is maybe not the best one we could uh, generate for the moment. But we'll uh, update this part later on. So uh, the idea I have now is just to give you a tour on, uh, on the terrain as a uh, the last time and we'll be discussing a few of the new changes and um, improvement that I made for this version in the process. Uh, first thing I guess maybe for that we should stay up because uh, I would like to demonstrate the sun manipulation. Actually I'm going to reset the point of view. So that's the initial point of view you get on the planet and we, we are uh, located right now at the um, zenith of the um, coordinate zero of longitude and zero of latitude at this point here and uh, it's the same for no the, the Sun is actually using longitude uh, 28 so if you set that to zero but I uh, would be able to do it of course uh, the sun would be basically at the same location as a camera. Anyway, if we m increase the longitude, you see that the sun is moving on the right side. And if you decrease that, it's going to move on the left side. And we can do the same now with the latitude angle. You can decrease that, so the sun is going down and positive latitude is going up. All right. Uh, so this is different from uh, what we had in the previous uh, demonstration because uh, previously we were just using, using a zenith angle and uh, an azimuth angle, I think. Oh, and the uh, first thing maybe I should mention is this demonstration here is available online. So you can just navigate to this URL, so nerftech.org, terrain view 6 and you will be able to play with this uh, demo on your side. I mean, assuming uh, you have a powerful enough GPU, of course, and you are running Chrome um, to get the proper uh, web GPU support. All right, now maybe, okay, what do I have here? Okay, that's another issue I guess I should mention. It's not working perfectly yet because I still have a few issues remaining in the code. Okay, and I, I need to investigate this further. So you might face this yourself if you try this uh, demo, it's going to uh, crash basically, so you, you can only just reload the, the full demo in this case and restart. Usually I don't get that many of those uh, crash but uh, let's hope I won't have another one now. Uh, next thing as I said is we can just find a good location and start navigating around. When you are far away from the terrain the, um, I don't like the display that I get very much but at the same time it's it could be worse but when you get closer now it's I think a lot better than what it was before because I have a a uh, more realistic distribution on um, and mixing of the different type of materials. So from my perspective, this is making the, the terrain look uh, a bit more uh, realistic. But yeah, that's something I could still play a bit uh, further with and I could change a few of those settings. And um, Yes, uh, first thing maybe on this list now the on the control GUI is this uh, draw quad skirt which is enabled by default and that's actually going to draw the I don't know if you know this thing that when you draw some those quads you can draw this 
uh, a border, a vertical border around the quads. And actually, if we go below the terrain, we will see that. <laughs> it's a big mess, of course. But this is actually useful to fix a minor issue, minor precision issue that you might have between the quads. And if you disable that, you will notice that, for instance, we have this here. You don't get those, uh, and you see those white lines. And in fact, we now have this option to toggle the display of the quads and the sub quads directly from the menu. And uh, you see that uh, between the quads, you may sometimes have those uh, missing pixels, basically. And let's try to get close to this. Um, those error I, I could not find a better way to fix them in fact it's due to the precision of the floating point computation but I, I can't really improve on that I mean so far I could not find a way at least except from adding this skirt so if I had that then you work around this uh, display artifact and it's um, basically invisible now so yeah probably something to keep enabled by default and uh, what's next oh that's a bit too slow now um, for the lighting I guess yeah right now the zero zero doesn't provide a very nice perspective this lighting effect is something I need probably to improve on again and I like to increase this a bit so if it's not completely at the vertical it, it feels better and the terrain feels more real Next, we can now also toggle between the um, three different type of display here. Uh, this again was something I was playing with um, while debugging the code. So I just promoted this to be able to toggle this from the control panel here. And the default is the auto imagery. So that's uh, the view that we have right now. And otherwise, we can also display the normals, except that the um, this was useful initially, and it was looking better than what we have for the moment. But after that, I actually moved the rendering into uh, camera space computation, and so the normals that we have here are actually in camera space which means that depending on the camera orientation the color that we get on the ground is going to change so not very useful um, the best you can do is look almost down at the terrain and in this case the the color is somewhat stable and this can give a, a better idea of what is the uh, underlying shape of the terrain uh, without the lighting effect. Which you don't necessarily see very clearly when you're in the auto display mode. Oh, this is less bright. I need some time to, to get used to it now. Alright. So yeah, not very useful to, to use the normal display, but we have it here anyway. And then we have also the elevation display, which is also not very useful because uh, this is just a gray level display of the elevation. I was thinking maybe I could use a color map or something like that to get progressive transition in the color of the terrain in, the, um, in this view. But in the hand, I'm not really going to use that anyway, so it's probably going to stay as a, a great display for a moment. And uh, okay, what, what next should I mention? I just mentioned already that the terrain itself is uh, displaying um, with more detail. In fact, I can maybe just quickly 
um, mention that in the code itself. It's all done here in this terrain material function, which is going to mix a different type of materials. And the, the key thing is we now have an additional noise component, which is a uh, um, simple with a higher resolution than the default noise. Uh, I guess, yes, the H scale value was something like 5, if I, if I remember correctly. And this additional noise is added to the normalized coordinate that we are providing to the mix material function. And with this, you get much better um, um, mixed of those different materials except that yeah i can't really just modify the shader here because i'm running here in the web gp in the wasm version so uh there's no support for live reloading of uh, the shader or anything like that so it's not going to, to change the display um okay what else Yeah, I actually spent a lot of time trying to, to fix some uh, some issue that I didn't have in the previous version for the Terrain View 5 when I moved to the um, Wasm compilation. So compiling with Unscripten, that, that was producing the result that were different from uh, what I was observing with the native version of uh, the application and in fact for instance I have built a complete system where I have a memory management a custom memory management layer so I was building my own containers on vector containers with a custom memory allocation system and all this I basically had to remove for the moment because it seems that in uh, inscription that doesn't really work anymore. I guess it's also related to the density of uh, the terrain uh, because uh, now, as you can see here, the level is, is going very low. So, I mean, very high. We can go up to 22. And that means that, yeah, you can have a, a lot of quads to display and you can have a lot of dynamic allocation to do to change those quads very quickly. So when you're moving around like that, especially with a very high speed. So yeah, that's might be the reason why um, Unscripten is getting a bit confused. I don't know. But anyway, I mean, it's it's probably related to the, the crash that we've seen just before. But I need to investigate further on this. All right. I'm trying to find a nice spot. Usually when you go in the mountain, it's pretty cool. I like to walk uh, next to a, a big uh, mountainous uh, reef. I mean, if you look at the terrain on different perspective, like maybe this one, I feel it's really starting to, to look realistic. I mean, other parts are not such realistic when you, you see all those uh, curves on the terrain. Maybe it's too much detail, but I don't really want to remove that either, so we'll see. Another part also is on the, the rift display. If you look at this with a close view, uh, you will see that now we don't have the details the very small detail that we had in the previous version and that's because I basically had to remove this because it's it's computed using the global coordinates of the of the pixels in the world which is working fine when you have a flat terrain which is only uh, I think it was 200 units uh, of size but that doesn't work anymore at all when you have a Earth planet terrain like this one because all those coordinates are from the center of the Earth. And by the way, if I go down, let me just try to go through the terrain. Uh, okay, so here you have, it's uh, much bigger than it should be because um, 
uh, the thick wireframe rendering is going to increase uh, the size of the rendering, but uh, the cube is representing the center of the earth here. It's still here. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so all the coordinates that we have uh, are like uh, 6 million uh, 300,000 meters or something like that. So you get very imprecise computation when you're considering uh, locations that are very, very close one to another. And that gives you some kind of um, jittering artifact when the camera is moving. So I could actually not use the this uh, previous nose effect on the, the rift and I had to disable that. I need to find another mechanism and yeah I mean the idea is it should be locally um, precise enough but also at the same time you need this to be globally continuous because you can't have uh, the nose changing completely from one quad to another so you could have maybe some noise pattern here and if it's reset to something else uh, for this squad it, it's not going to look realistic you need to add something continuous but with a very high resolution and I'm, I'm not quite sure how to do that yet so we'll see anyway um, yeah I think that's basically all I can say for the moment Oh yeah, also I have just added also this small button here, which was a cool test that I wanted to do. And now if I click on that, it's going to open a new page. Here I have to accept the YouTube uh, agreement. Uh, no, not. Why did I refuse? Stupid me. Uh, because this is a um, private uh, page. But normally if I click again, it should not ask me again. Oh uh, yeah, it's okay. So this uh, is something that's going to be useful for me because uh, the idea I have is I'm going to use that maybe um, to provide some bookmark management system directly into this 3D world. That's something I had in mind for a while. And yeah, we'll see how this works. So those bu this button here, of course it's completely implemented in T++. It's not something that I'm, that I'm adding on top of the on the view, like the white widget here. And we have that. Let me get back to, yeah, in the control panel. So it's just here, in fact. I'm building this um, info panel, which is actually just a simple container for a single button. And this button is displaying uh, the small logo plus the text and when you click on it it's going to open this URL directly so very nice okay and yeah I think basically this is it and in fact the recording is already pretty long so maybe I should not make it make it much longer than that as I said, if you if you want to give it a try, you can just navigate to this link. Uh, if you find any significant issue or anything, yeah, just let me know. Uh, but uh, yeah, you might face some instability sometimes. But as you can see, it's not happening very often. It's it happened only once up to this point. But I'm going to investigate that anyway. So maybe there will be an update for this uh, Terrain View version 6 sometime later. Anyway, if you have any question, just let me know. And otherwise, I see you for the next version of uh, this Terrain Rendering. Um, what am I going to do? Um, I'm thinking about adding the Atmosphere display now. So we'll see. It's probably going to be the next thing. So thanks for watching and see you another time. Bye bye.